Don't touch that quad nobulator, and make sure to stay tuned to 9847723602ZM. Hey, it's ya boy, Weefy Nooms here. Back with another installment of I'm Still Here. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to keep the energy up even though it's raining outside. Sitting here all alone in the buster remains of a 24 plus year old spaceship in the middle of a roofless abandoned grocery store, it gets a little lonely. I, I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty hopeful to see what I would assume would be a very obvious flashing red light blinking when I got back on the dashboard, but no such luck. We are at around the 51 hour mark of the broadcasting time, and while all you sexy, silent, Topekan ladies were rocking out to punk Hanukkah music, I slept and went to work for two days. Today, we have a folklore-like story written by yours truly. It revolves around the social intricacies of friendship, something I find ever complicated and outside my grasp of understanding. It's something you don't think about, it's just something you do. And to people that have social anxieties, that is not easy. It's something we think about too much. I think it's really a story that invites the listener to reflect inwards before trying to fix issues that they see in other people. Once upon a time, four animals that were all really good friends lived in a forest together. There was a mischievous fox, the playful hare, the introverted tortoise, and the blaring land whale. The blaring land whale had a bad habit of spouting water out of his blowhole whenever he spoke too loudly, which happened to be all the time because he never knew how to control his volume. That day, after an incident with seawater being spewed into mischievous fox's coffee, Fox called a housemate. This has gone on too far. I will have to wait a whole nother season to grow more hazelnut for my coffee. The fox exclaimed. We can always talk to him. Talk and have a really good time. And make jokes and be swell friends. Suggested the playful hare. The introverted tortoise kept her thoughts to herself and let the two decide what to do. They came to the conclusion they would each take turns talking to Mr. Whale. Given the other didn't come back in a reasonable time, they would assume the other to be struggling, putting the explanation into words, and needed help. So, Miss Fox went first. Mr. Whale and Miss Fox sat down on a log and had a heart-to-heart. -heart. Mr. Whale, when you spout your nonsense, it douses everyone around you with a concoction no one asked for. Thinking this was a mutual talk to benefit each other, Mr. Whale thought for a while before responding. Miss Fox? You tend to pick on people a little too often. Some people take offense to it. I do no such thing. Where is this even coming from? Who asked you? Said Miss Fox as she stormed off. After a while, since no one ever came back, the playful hare decided to give it a shot. They sat down on the log and had a heart to heart. Mr. Whale, although you're providing slip and slide that I find fun, when you spray the trees, I hear the birds crying out in surprise. Thinking yet again, this was a chance to illuminate the unseen corners of each of their faults. Mr. Whale ponders before responding. Mr. Hare, you tend to be a little too energetic. It's hard to keep up with your spirit, and sometimes we just want to be chill, not run a marathon. Oh, I didn't know that. I just like to move a lot, and when I get anxious, I need to move, and if I can't move, then I get anxious. Oh wait, am I doing it right now? Am I being annoying? And the playful hare fretted ever so self-consciously off into the forest. Seeing as Miss Fox and Mr. Hare never came back, the introverted tortoise decided to go visit Mr. Whale. They sat down on a log and had a heart-to-heart. -heart. Ah, Mr. Whale. How are you? Asked the tortoise. I'm doing swell, Miss Tortoise. I'm learning so much about myself today, Mr. Whale sort of whispers. Have you come to tell me something too? Mr. Whale blares. Oops. I'm sorry. 
Miss Tortoise wiped away the seawater on her face. Mm, no. After taking a deep breath, she pulled out an umbrella. You might not be able to control your volume, but I can at least control how it affects me. Now how about we sing that opera song you like so much? I would love that, exclaimed the whale, causing a torrential downpour in a surrounding 50 mile radius. And after extensive water damage repairs, they were friends until the incident in the 1850s. Thanks for listening. I will be back with another installment after another 48 hours of uninterrupted music. This time featuring songs that sound like detectives sneaking into a criminal organization without getting caught.